The president of Slovakia says she will give a mandate to former hardline prime minister Robert Fico to form a new government. The pro-Kremlin candidate won Sunday's vote with a campaign on ending Slovakia's military aid to Ukraine. It's an unlikely comeback for the former leader who fell from power after the murder of an investigative journalist. He will now, though, have to find much-needed allies to build a coalition. To talk to us a bit more about all of that, let's bring in our international affairs commentator, Doug Herbert, who joins me on set. Uh, how tough is it going to be forming this coalition? Well, it depends who he forms it with, but he's looking at the third-place party. It's called The Voice, Hloss. It got 15 percent of the vote. Uh, and it's led by uh, a guy who was once a party ally of, of Robert Fitzo, so basically broke away to form his own party. Um, it's going to depend on how much Fizzo is, is willing to sort of be more pragmatic in power, pragmatic in the ways perhaps that we saw uh, Giorgia Maloney in Italy have to be. She campaigned on a very hard, very anti-immigrant line, blockade all immigrants. Um, in this case, Fizzo's probably, he campaigned on a line, we are not giving a single round of ammunition to Ukraine, no more military support, if I'm elected. He's very social conservative, um, you know, against LGBTQ rights, against uh, minority women's rights, uh, you know, a very nationalist, populist message that hit a raw nerve in a Slovakia that, let's not forget, remains, even though it's been staunchly pro-EU and pro-NATO in recent years, is a staunchly conservative country at heart, where many of the votes Voters, especially older ones, are still very sympathetic and feel an allegiance for Russia um, and allegiance to Putin. So I put up here, this is what his coalition, if he's able to cobble one together with this third place party loss, uh, could look like. Like I said, no more military aid to Ukraine. So the shape of things to come, and that, that would be a giant policy reversal. This is a country that is practically an immediate neighbor of Ukraine saying no more weapons for Ukraine. It was the first um, uh, country to deliver fighter jets to Ukraine, Slovakia. So this is no little, uh, you know, thing to sneeze at. Block Kiev from joining NATO. That would also be a major policy reversal. Will it happen? We don't know. Often, you know, he's a far left populist and people, the rhetoric on the campaign trail softens or, like I said, becomes more pragmatic when the exigencies of power present themselves. But look, uh, opposing sanctions against Russia. All we're talking about these days are this so-called wearying of public opinion, especially Central Eastern Europe, uh, with regard uh, to Ukraine public opinion. Is this going to happen? Is he going to cozy up to Putin? We say, we call him pro-Moscow, pro-Kremlin, Kremlin sympathies. sympathies. It's going to be extremely uh, interesting to see where he draws the line between being a pragmatic ruler and hewing to that very conservative, nationalist, populist, socially conservative line that he campaigned on. So, Doug, his win came as in Poland. We saw one of the biggest opposition rallies in modern history, and yet the opposition there is trailing in the polls ahead of that election in two weeks' time. Yeah. Now, look, you see the pictures, and I guess the pictures will come up in a second. You see the pictures of nearly a million people, according, Jeannie, to the Warsaw mayor's office, showed up in central Warsaw uh, to rally. Really, the, 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 the keynote speaker was the, the, the leader, Donald Tusk, of the civic platform, a centrist opposition uh, uh, coalition, and, you know, a man also gunning to be prime minister uh, again. And Donald Tusk, a former Polish prime minister, also known in Europe as being a former president of the European Council, um, he's a man that, yeah, was able to, you know, rally together a lot of people united on the streets of Warsaw. But let's not forget that the opposition in Poland is not united against the, the right-wing ruling law and justice party. Um, unlike, say, in Turkey, where against Erdogan, and we'll remember, ultimately the opposition failed there, uh, they were united under one person, ideologically different opposition parties. But they all said, for the sake of trying to beat Erdogan, we need to all come together. That's not yet the case in Poland. Might it happen in the next two weeks? possible, but it's not yet. Those people came from different ideological parties, but they're not electorally united, and that's what the difference is. The latest polls show the Law uh, and Development Party, the ruling party, the right-wing party, uh, leading by about 35 percent, which brings us back to what I was saying about Slovakia. At heart, Genie, Poland is a rural, conservative, religious country where a lot of people still like the Law and Justice Party, a party that the opposition in the, on those streets right now are united in fearing are going to end democracy in Poland as they know it. Already they see democracy being eroded, law, the rule of law, media freedoms, the court system, women's rights, the list goes on and on. They see this as a very clear and present danger if the Law and Justice Party is, is once again elected to power. And as of today, 
it seems like still a strong possibility. All right, Doug, thanks for that.